Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public to get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. We give you a choice. Sit down with one of our regular dealers. Now, they're going to try and tempt you with a cash <laughs> offer on the table today. Hundred pounds. Oh, definitely You're not. You're laughing. <laughs> I am. <laughs> no. If I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to say no. Reject that. Have a gamble. Go to auction in the hope that you will get a little bit more money there. Today, the show comes to you from Leicester. We're at the home of the Leicester Tigers Rugby Ground. Yay! Wow, what a scrum that is. People have arrived in large numbers. They want to do business. They want to get some cash or go to auction. You know why they're here. They're here for the real deal. All go in the den, all sorts of goodies turning up. The first deal of the day is handed to Hoggy. Um, well, it's my hen night tonight. We never expected any of this. So did it go any further? I get married next Friday. Um, so if we get the money we'd like today, then I think we'll be buying a few bottles of bubbly later. <laughs> Time to dig deep, Hoggy, all for a good cause. Gemma, thanks for coming in today with your stash of silver. Where did you get it from? They're my grandpa. They were my grandpa's before right. he passed away. Okay. And uh, we found them when we were clearing out their bungalow when, when they both passed away. And is he a, was he a collector? Uh, yeah, he collected lots of things. He collected stamps <laughs> as yeah. well as coins and, and yeah. These are commemorative coins, I'm sure you know that anyway. Yeah, I know some of them are foreign ones as well. Yeah. And every time something important happened, they produced a coin for it. Yeah. And there are collectors out there who just collect these sort of coins and put them away and keep them in the hope that they're going to go up in price. Yeah. That's the good news. The bad news is that they produce so many of them that often never go up in price. You know, they just sort of stick around. A lot of uh, companies sell this sort of stuff anyway. And so why are you selling them today then? Um, I'm getting married shortly and it's my hen night tonight. Um, and really? We just thought, um, why not bring them along and see if they're worth anything yeah. and get some money for a couple of bottles of bubbly. What a great idea. <laughs> I'm already tempted to give you over you the top us. prices. <laughs> no, I'm a married man, please. <laughs> um, it's a nice little item, really. Whether it's going to be a collector who buys these off me or whether they just stay in my drawers for a, another couple of years, I don't know, really. Should I try and offer? Have you got an idea of price? I've done a bit of research. Good, that's what I like to hear. <laughs> I haven't had time to do any research, so I wouldn't have a clue how much they're worth, but I'll gamble. 20, 40, that's one bottle. 60, 80, that's two bottles of champagne. 100, 120 pounds. That's about four bottles of champagne there. Yeah? Wouldn't last us very long. Really? Are you heavy drinkers? <laughs> Me and my friends. There's government warnings on that sort of thing, you know. <laughs> so 120 is there. How much would you be happy with? Uh, I'd love 150. I'll give you 150. 120, 140, 150 pounds. We've got a deal. We've got a deal. Thank you. Thank it's you. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> have fun on your we head will. night. I'll have a drink for you. Thank you very much. <laughs> it was Gemma's head night. I felt generous. 150 quid. I don't think I'll make any money, but, you know, who knows? Crikey, Hoggy, what a corking price. Gemma's off to celebrate. Find out later if Michael's generosity gets the better of him. Helen Gardner's next. What on earth has John brought with him? What can you tell me about it? This well, is a, a kind of astonishing thing altogether. Right, well, it's a very early calculator. Yes. Um, it was built, um, well, it was designed uh, by a German prisoner of war in a concentration yes. camp. Yes. And um, he survived the war. And, Thankfully. Um, yeah. And after that, um, these went into production in Liechtenstein. Yeah. And uh, I believe they built uh, quite a lot of them. And when was this? About nine, in the early 50s? Early 50s, yeah. Yeah, I think this model's probably around about 51, 52. Yeah, so that's um, quite early then. Yeah, oh. yeah. But um, what a nice piece of engineering. It's beautiful, isn't it? I mean, you know, the weight, just, that's a real, I, I, I wouldn't even attempt to see how it works, but I can see that it's beautifully engineered. This one actually belonged to my father. Yes. Um, he, he, he was a, a local industrialist and uh, he used to use that every he day. He used this? Every day. How fa fantastic every day. is that? 
A pity he wasn't here to show us how this worked. <laughs> <laughs> to me, this is a boy's toy. Right. This is, but luckily I've maybe got a few boys that would like a toy. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. It's an interesting thing. I find it quite fascinating. Uh, I would never attempt to see how it works. What's this going to be worth? Have you any idea what it's worth? I've got a bit of a rough idea. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's collectible. Oh, very much so. Very yeah. highly collectible. Yeah. Of course. I'm going to have to put some money on the table then. Yes, please do. Because I quite like it. It's £50. It's £100. What do you think of that? Well, it's almost the start. Almost the start of my heart. 120, 140. How's 140 sounding? No, I wouldn't take that. You wouldn't to be take honest, that? No. Am I way out? Is it much, much more than that, or is it just a little bit more? Well, I think, um, yeah, I think that's quite a long way out, actually. 160. How about 170? Is that closer? Well, it's certainly closer, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'd like to take a chance at much more than that. I think that's a pretty good offer. It might be worth a lot more. I have no idea. Maybe. Well, I think 170 is, is uh, probably a good offer. Um, I wanted to give the money to charity anyway, to a local charity in yeah. Leicester, so um, if that's your last offer, what I'd prefer to do is uh, to go to auction if that's okay. Well, uh, I don't know that I would be prepared to put a much more down. I'll, I'll take the 10 away and I'll make it 180, but I think that's going to be my last offer. I think that's, yes, you've had a good stab at it, but I would prefer to go to auction because, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm trying to raise as much money as I can Absolutely. For, for the charity. Well, I think you're, I think you're very wise because it's, it could be worth a lot more. I just don't know. But anyway, nice to see you, and I hope it does really, really well at auction. That's very Thanks kind. Thanks for bringing in such an interesting item. Thank you, Helen. Thank you very much. These things have been known to uh, make quite a bit of money. It's who's there on the day. I'm going to go for it. It would be a gamble for me, but I did like it and I did try to buy it. But hey ho, what can we do? You can't win them all. Hard luck, Helen. Your numbers just didn't add up for the calculator. Let's see if a determined John can get a better deal at the auction. The auctioneer Stephen Iredale has his gavel at the ready. At ten pounds. You sat down with Helen Gardner, one of our dealers, and, and the wee Helen said, I'll give you 180 quid. You turn that down, why? Because it's for charity, I thought I'd try and get as much as I can. If it doesn't fetch that today, well, that's the amount I should give to charity anyway. So. OK. The reserve is 200 pounds. Yes. OK, here we go now. A lot of interest, and it starts with me at 220 pounds, 240 now, at 220, 240, 260, 280, 300. They'd like it. It's rare. It's unusual. 360, 360 new place at £360 for a very good cause. All the money going to charity at £360. 360 on the net at 360 370 now. I'll be fair, take 10 for you as well. At £360, 70 now. At 360, one more bid, go on. 370. 370 here in the room. All the money going to cancer charity at 370. Gentlemen standing at 370. Gavel's gone down against the internet. A buyer here in the room. A round of applause here because we know this is being given by our friend John here. All of this is being given to a cancer charity. I'm pretty sure the auctioneer will waiver his commission. And so the whole £370, John, you're giving it to a charity. Do yep. you want to name that charity? I'm happy to name it. Yes, it's to Loros in Leicester, which is a, a hospice. The hospice is going to get the money. That is the real deal. Back in the dealer's den, Cheryl's looking very pleased with herself. Is this silver scent bottle the reason why? Tell me, what do you know about it? Uh, I know it's a perfume bottle holder, and it's got the original bottle in. Right. Uh, and it's 18.99, and the maker's mark is SM, but uh -huh. I don't know the maker. SM, that normally we would say it's probably... Well, Samson Morden. Samson Morden. But, and looking at this, just glancing, this yeah. looks like the quality... I couldn't say it was Samson Morden. 
How did you come to own this pool? I actually bought this in uh, an antique pool. Recently or? Uh, within the last 12 months. All oh, right, OK. And why are you thinking of parting with it today? I like silver and I want to buy more silver. And I've had it for nearly a year, so okay. I want to move it on and get something else. So, may I have a, a yeah, look? Yeah, certainly. This beautiful, oh, the way this is all sort of repoussé, it's beautiful. It's not damaged, there's no holes in it. It looks like this has been very well treasured or hardly even used. There's not a dint, really, or a scratch, and it's not been over-polished either. I mean, this is fabulous. So, if we could just open this. I'm always a bit cautious doing this, thinking, oh! Magic. Look at this beautiful gilding inside. That's always a sign of great quality, as I'm sure you know. And to have the stopper. And I believe if we just do this, this is like yes. cracking open an again. Easter egg, isn't it? Wow, look, the, again, look at this gilding. Look at the detail and the work. And this little green glass perfume bottle. Even the original label sits there. Yep. So I don't think this has been used much, do you? No. Beautiful little item. Let's close him back up there. Fantastic. Paul, I'm going to get some money out. OK. So I'm sure you've got a good idea what you want, but I do like to buy something nice. Yeah. I'll try my best. OK. 50... 100 pounds. Definitely You're not. You're laughing. <laughs> I am. <laughs> no. Well, we've got to start somewhere. Yes, I know. <laughs> it's 150. 170, Paul. Uh, um, no, it's got to be more than that. It's got to be more than that, David, well, he says. Well, I've had a look at this. It really is quite a sweetie. Two to three hundred pounds is what the independent valuers are saying. Now, bear in mind, if it goes with an estimate, there is a 15% commission to be deducted. At the moment, we have 170 on there. It's the equivalent of £200 in the sale room, which is the lower estimate. It's pretty, it's desirable, it's right up your street. Shh, shh, <laughs> do not tell. It's worth a bit more than that, Cheryl. That's all I'm going to say. Thank you. So, Paul, what do you think? <laughs> Keep going, she hasn't lied, she hasn't even just Keep going. Yeah. Well, I'm going to put another 20 down. Give me another 20, you've got a deal, Shannon. Another 20? Listen, I'll tell you what I'll do. Take these away, put another one of these down. £200, that gives me a little bit of a chance, tiny little profit. What do you think? OK, Shannon, you've got a deal. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Paul. Thank you. <laughs> Well, I'm really pleased. It's the most I've ever, ever given for a perfume bottle. But this, as we said, is the Rolls Royce of perfume bottles. Paul was happy with his money. I love it. So sometimes you've got to pay for quality. So has Cheryl paid over the odds or bagged herself a great deal? Find out later. Coming up, Ian flashes the cash. You want all of it? Three hands. Now, how does 300 sound to you? Well... It must sound good. Yes, it sounds good, but it's it not quite tempting. good enough. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Back to the hustle and bustle in the dealer's den. Ian Towning can't wait to get his first deal underway. Omega, ladies' watch. Yes. 1960s. It's yours? Yes. It was my mother's. It was your mother's? Yes, yes. And you've used it? Yes. Enjoyed yeah. it? Yes, yes. And now it's got to go? But the last few years it's been just sitting in a box and um, in the drawer. And if I should buy it, will you go and buy another watch with the money? No. <laughs> Put it towards a holiday. A holiday? Yes, oh, somewhere yes. nice, I hope. Yes, yes. Somewhere warm. Yes, yes. yes I don't yes. blame you. I yeah. love the heat. Yes, I hate so the cold. Yes. So. Is it in good working order? Yes, as far as I know, yes, yes. Yeah. But it's in pretty good condition because normally what happens with these watches, where they join the actual movement or the case, mm -hmm. they invariably break because of the continuous movement of the strap. So mm -hmm. that is very good to know. 
you've looked after it and your mother oh, yes. has looked after it, yes, which is very yes, gla I'm yes. glad to say. Mm -hmm. Do you have a box or papers no, or anything? No, I haven't, unfortunately. No, no I haven't got a box. Okay. No. So, now we talk about money. Yes. <laughs> lots of it. Your <laughs> favourite thing, lots of it. <laughs> well, I brought a few yes. found notes with me. Just a few. Do you want all of it? Mm. Okay, <laughs> we'll see what we can do. So, shall we say 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300. Now, how does 300 sound to you? Well, it must sound good. Yes, it sounds good, but it's it not quite tempting. good enough. Let's say I go to 350. One little more, one little more, <laughs> just one, one more. little more. One more. <laughs> uh, I think 350 is a pretty good price. Yeah, <laughs> I think that is. Uh... Now then, TikTok. Now Ian's put 350 pounds on the table. Normally, I am <laughs> twisting this bejeweled arm up his back, but at the moment, 350 sounds a very good price to me. The scrap value, dare I say, of your treasured item is about 370 pounds, something like that. So I'm going to say on this occasion, and only on this occasion, take his money. Right. Our deal. <laughs> you see? Our deal. I was being fair with you. Yes. Shall we shake hands? Yes. Thank you so thank much. You. Have a great holiday. Yes, thank you, you very go. much. <laughs> thank you. Don't forget the sun cream, Helena. Hogg is next in the picture. He's been joined by Tom. So, Tom, you brought in a couple of cameras? Yes, yes. Where did you get them from? Uh, when my father passed away, he just left them. Um, I've just been looking after them. Is it part of a collection, Tom, or is it, um, it just two cameras? You no, I've got a, a lot, but they're all like print, old Prince cameras and they're not really worth yeah. a lot. But not tempted to keep them? Not these, no, no. It, Why is that? They just get in the way, you know, with, not got a very big house and it's yeah. got kids you know what it's like and yeah <laughs> what we've got is a cine camera that's this one here yeah and that's got its case with it yeah and this is by bolex and they did two of these they did an 8 mil and a 16 mil and this is an 8 mil one oh, that's eight, the eight millimeter mil. yeah and this one is a stills camera and these really if you know anything about cameras these are quite ten a penny really yeah, there's yeah. a lot of them around. Yeah. And cameras at the moment are becoming dinosaurs. Oh, Everyone's no. taking pictures on their phones now. So, you know, and even the digital cameras, which were all the rage five years ago, almost gone out the window, aren't they? Yeah, it's amazing. My dad won't believe it, Albert. It no, now, but... it's quite incredible, really. They do have some collectability, but not as much as you would think, really, when you think of the machinery the workmanship and everything what mm. went into these, they don't really sort of... I suppose they'll just become like history value rather than... Yes, very true. All down to a little bit of money, Tom. Yeah, not. All right then, let's do a splash a bit of cash, shall we? we try. <laughs> don't get too excited. 20 quid the pair. A bit more than that, I think. I've got to sell them, really, so that's the thing I'm up against. I'll go 30 quid, but I'm really not going to go much more than that. No, you wouldn't go to 40. I wouldn't, Tom. To be honest with you, I see this, me getting 20 quid for 25, 30 on a good day. Yeah. And sort of 15 quid on that on a good day as well, you know? I'd rather take a chance at auction and Would you? see how we get on, yeah. Could I tempt you with another fiver? Um. If it was a tenner, maybe. No, I can't do a tenner. I'll do a fiver, right? I'll do a 35 spot. No, I think I'd still rather go to auction. Sure? I, yeah, yeah. I think you made, made the right decision. Okay, thank I you. I wish you luck. Nice to meet you. And you too. Thank you. Has Tom made the right decision? David's taking care of business at the auction. 
They're here in the auction. He can't make it today. I'm looking after his interest. They're coming up now. The reserve is 60 quid. My only thoughts are, is the 60 pounds just a little bit ambitious? Maybe not. There's two cameras here. Let's see what happens. Starts here at 25, 30 do I see. 35, 40, 40 pounds I'm bit. Five do I see, 45, 50, five, 60, five, 70. Amazing. Five, 80, five. It's made the reserve. 90, five, 90 pounds, one more, sir. Five for you, fought this hard, 95, thank you. 100, another five, sir. At 100 pounds for the two 1950s cameras. In the room standing, five do I see anywhere. At 100 pounds, I'm bidden five now. All done then, at £100. The gamble has gone down at £100. Snap! Take away the commission, that's £82. And we'll be sending that off to Thomas today. That was the real deal. Now, let's head back into the dealer's den where Lady Godiva has trotted onto our very own fair maiden's table, Cheryl Hagney. Now tell me about this rather risque lady that you brought <laughs> along. <laughs> it's daytime TV, don't forget. Yeah. <laughs> it was in my dad's loft two years ago, okay. and it actually belonged to my grandma. I don't know if it was a wedding present or a prize at a fair. I don't know. So no it's idea. Just always been there. Do you yeah. ever remember oh, it in oh, the yes. house? Or... Yes. And why are you thinking of selling it? What would I do with that? <laughs> <laughs> so you've not got her on display in your house no. then? No? No, it certainly wouldn't match. So do you, do you know anything else about her? Have I you don't, researched actually, it I wish yourself? Did. No. It's 1930s. Hopefully that will tie in yeah. maybe with you know its history from the family. It's made of plaster. Yeah. You saw lots of these. Um, I don't think I've seen Lady... I'm sure it is Lady Godiva. It is. Positive it is. So I've not seen her before. It's quite, you know, it is quite a nice thing, this. It's a great size. It's quite decorative. Being plaster and suffering, it's chipped there. A few little chips here and there. Lost a bit of the ear, unfortunately. Ah. Uh -huh. How on, earth, how on earth have you kept that? Well, it was in a box, and that was in the bottom of the box. Well done for keeping yeah. it. I don't think it's got great value at all, so I'm I don't, sure I don't, it has. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to raise your hopes too much. But the nice thing is it's typically 1930s. Um, it's, it's a decorative thing. Maybe somebody that had a pub or a restaurant, it would appeal to them. But like you, these days, everybody is sort of getting rid of ornaments and no, dust no, collectors. No. So it's, she's not going to have huge, huge value, but I'm going to put some cash down. If you don't like my offer, you know the score. You can go with David to the auction and try your luck there. Okay. See, see what you think. I don't think this is going to be the longest deal in history. <laughs> it, it may be just as, as it is, I think. £20, Jill. Oh, that is low, isn't it? That's low. Ooh. She's got to be worth more than that. I'm going to get this little one out now. Oh, gosh. 25 Perhaps I'd better take it to Coventry and sell her there. If you sell it today, you won't have to carry it all I the way know. home. <laughs> but the choice is yours. Stay out at the auction with David, try your luck, you might get a bit more, or £25 in cash. I'll take a minute. Nice to meet Thanks you. Thanks a lot. Well and you. Thank you. Still to come, Ian's seriously underwhelmed. I think to me it's worth like £20. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Can a tiny oriental dragon set the sale room alight? That's good. That's very good. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from the home of the Leicester Tigers. I wonder if this next car boot buy will bring a little look to its owner, John. I'm looking for somewhere around about £100 for it, if possible. All the best, John. Substone Oriental figure. Yes. And yes. what can you tell us about it? Uh, I bought it from 
say car boot. I'll, I'll pay a little for it. You paid a little yeah, for yeah, it, and yeah. you want a lot. Yeah, that, that is correct. Yes. You want yeah. more for yes, it yes. than you paid for it. Yes. Are you sure? I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, it isn't terribly old. You probably realise that. Yes, yes. You know, it's fairly modern, mm -hmm. and uh, it's like a temple dog or a temple creature, whatever you want to call it. And. Uh, Hong Kong, Singapore, Bangkok, yeah. <laughs> wherever you go, there's thousands of them around. The thing is, okay, you may have bought it in a car boot sale, mm -hmm. and it, it's modern. It hasn't got any great value to it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and because it's terribly, terribly modern, you know, it's limited as to its value. Yes. How long ago did you buy it? Two years ago. Two years ago. So you're hoping for a good investment here. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know if you've had a crash? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, and why did you sell it? If you went looking for it and you found it? No, well, I just looked in these little cabinets on car boot and I spotted it and I thought, well, yeah, it's Chinese. And you think you'd make some money yeah. out of this? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll make you just one offer. I know you're going to say, oh my God, Ian, no, I want more. But <laughs> it's. To me, in value, <laughs> you're looking at me with very suspicious eyes. You know, I think to me it's worth like twenty pounds. No. You know, you want a lot more. Mm-hmm. Okay. Want a bit more. A bit more. Well, <laughs> um, okay. Let's be generous and say thirty pounds. No. I wouldn't pay more than 30 pounds for it because mm -hmm. it's too modern for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, are, what are you looking for? You're oh, looking for more than that? Oh, I think it's worth somewhere in the region of 100 pounds. Well, I think that's a huge, uh, um, huge price for mm. something that is soapstone and modern. The, least, the, the very least I'd take for it is 60 pounds. Really? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't want to pay more than 30 pounds, mm -hmm. honestly. It's all the uh, auction or back home. <laughs> <laughs> auction or back home. Well, I'm afraid it has to go to auction in that case. Mm -hmm. okay. But good luck in auction. Mm -hmm. And you know, I hope you make 100 pounds. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, John. Uh, Thank okay. you so much. Yeah. Thank and, you. and good luck. Really yeah. good luck. These little pieces fetch, you know, six, eight, ten pounds. So, and you can buy them absolutely anywhere in any market of Hong Kong, Singapore. So, good luck to John. Ian's not impressed. Will John prove him wrong? Here it is. This, this is a soapstone carving. Is there any age with it? Is it a reproduction? You never know. Sometimes they're early ones. Uh, speculative thing. It starts here at forty pounds. Starts at forty pounds. You turn down thirty. At forty pounds and five forty-five. Fifty. Five. Sixty. Five. Seventy. Five. Eighty. Five. Do they know more than we knew? Do they know more than he knew? Eighty-five bit. Ninety now. Ninety. Five. One hundred. One ten. One twenty. One thirty. One forty. One fifty. 150 bid, 160 at 150 pounds in the room. What's this telling us? It's telling us someone fancies this to have a bit of age. 160 now on the internet at 150 pounds, 60 now. That's good. That's very good. At 150, 60 do I see? All done then at 150. Gavel has gone down at 150 pounds. I make that about 123 pounds to take home after the deductions. Now, what's your thoughts on this, John? Very, very good. Very, very good. So you're happy on yeah, that? Yeah, I certainly am. I think it's a winner on the day. It's the real deal. £123. John scored. Time for another deal. It's Today over to Helen. Now, tell us about this nice embroidery you've brought in. What can you tell me about this? Well, I had it from... Uh, Customer of mine, I'm a dressmaker. Yes. So she come along and said, make me two blouses or cut it down. So I said, oh, what a shame. I said, I'll make you another blouse so I kept the skirt. <laughs> so I had it for a little while now. That was a good 
way of saving yes, it, wasn't it? Yes, it's so shame. She, your customer brought it in yes. uh, for you to make it into a blouse for yeah. her, but you said, no, 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 no uh, yeah. I'm going to keep this. That's no. right, yeah. So how long have you had it, Sitting? Well, since 1975. 1975? Yes. So what's making you sell it now? Well, it's been in the cupboard all the while, so it's never going to be displayed. So I thought I'd bring it up when I know it coming down to Leicester. So I said, I absolutely something antique. <laughs> The woman you got it from, where did she get it? She, I think she's a station in India, I think. Uh -huh. That's a like, last war or something. Yeah. That's where she got it from. I so think she, she must have it, it made. She must be had it she, made. You think yeah. she had it made there? Yes. Mm. Well, it's rather nice, isn't it? it is and the quality pretty. of the workmanship's very pretty. Mm -hmm. So have you got a figure in mind that you want for this city? Well, I might be. <laughs> a little figure? You're not going to tell me what that no. figure is. Now, how much do I want to pay for this? I have to decide. <laughs> and you have to decide if my money's good enough. Mm. How about... Let me see. There's £20. There's a £40. How about £60? I think that's not a bad start. Because it's quite a nice colour. Yeah. It's not a bad start. <laughs> not a bad start. <laughs> Well, I think it's quite nice. You know, it's, it's got a little bit of fading, but I think it could be made into a rather nice picture. Yeah. So, £60. Do I want to pay any more for this? Let me think. £70. You think that's not a bad offer? I think it's not, not, not too bad. Not a bad offer, but a little bit more. How about, since you're so nice, Another tenor. There's a Scottish tenor. All right. That's 20, 40, 60, 80 pounds. That I think I'm. Yes. I think I'm doing okay, okay here. Yeah, so what are you thinking, City? All right. Are you I happy with that? Yes. Okay. I think it's not a bad deal. No. Okay. <laughs> We've got a deal, City. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> I think the couple of panels make a nice little picture, and possibly that's where it'll end up. Another deal sewn up for Helen. We'll find out if she manages to sell the embroidery on at the end of the show. Coming up, Hoggy tries to impress with his knowledge. It's a French movement in there, it's an eight day movement and it's quite small for a carriage clock. But there's only one thing on our seller's mind. You just want me to get the money out, don't you? Yes, please. You're not even interested in the history, are you? No. <laughs> Welcome back. To Dickinson's real deal. We've seen some fantastic deals today. Our dealers have been working flat out. Time for one final bit of business. Let's head over to Hoggy. Leslie, what a nice item you brought in for me to have a look at. Yes. Tell me about it. It's my girlfriend's family's. It's... Right. Does she know you're selling it? Yes. She oh, does. it's all right then. You have yeah. to be worried then. <laughs> So it's your girlfriend's family, yeah, and it's been in our family quite a long time. Yes, it has, about 100 years, I think. Wow, because we hallmarked it, didn't we, to 1902, was it? Yeah, a silver. And what do you know about it? Do you know what it's made of? Or? Tortoise shell. Exactly, tortoise shell. It is got a lovely colour to it. Tortoise shell and silver are like lamb and mint sauce. They just go together. You mm. know, it's just a really nice look. And why are you selling it? Because we have no use for it, it's not no. on display, it's just stuck in a pouch in a drawer. Is it really? Mm -hmm. It's a French movement in there, it's an eight day movement, and it's quite small for a carriage clock. It's called a carriage clock because you would have carried it around with you wherever you went. So if a lady had a nice dressing table set, she would have taken that with her, and that would have been a carriage clock to go on mm -hmm. her dressing set. Great invention, I love carriage clocks, uh, and it's the sort of thing I'm going to have a go at, you know? When we look at it, there's a couple of little blemishes on there. Yeah, there's... And when you think of collectors, they're always so fussy. One of the blemishes we've got is this little bit on the back here. I'll just lay it over like that. Because you can actually see here where some sort of heat or something yeah. like that maybe has been against it, I don't know. It's been on a mantelpiece as far as I know. And right. I think the heat's just expanded it and done the damage to it. And has that happened in your lifetime? No. No. And you've got these lovely little bun feet. And then you've got all this silver work all the way around the tortoise shell. And as you turn it round, it's just a really nice petite little piece, mm -hmm. isn't it? And you've got the swags round here on the silver. 
and then obviously you got the movement with the key. You just want me to get the money out, don't you? Yes, please. You're not even interested in the history, are you? No. <laughs> okay, well, let's have a go then. I mean, you never know. But I'll tell you what I'm going to bid you. 50, 100, 50, 200, 50, 250. How's that grab you, Leslie? No. Really? No. I thought you'd have bit me hand off. You thought wrong. A lot of money for a little bit. No. I think it's worth more than that. Okay. 300. 320. How much more do you want? At least another 100. Oh, I couldn't go another 100. I'll go 340. No. You're ticking yeah. over, Hoggy, but tick tock, this is not enough money on the table. Four to six hundred pounds is the independent valuers and the auctioneer. I think at the moment, what's on the table? 340, David. 340 is below the uh, bottom estimate. If you got the lower estimate of 400 pounds and took away the 15%, you'd have 60 quid or 400, yeah. which would bring you back to that. What you've got to say to yourself is, if I go to auction on the four to 600 estimate, will I do better than the bottom estimate? I think you will, but I point this out to you because when we go there, one never knows on the day what is gonna happen. It's desirable, it's quality, and it has a reasonable good chance at auction. Unless Mr. Hogburn, my mate, decides to put a few more quid in. Ooh, Leslie. I do agree with David. You couldn't put another 20 on. I'll go a little bit more, Leslie, but it's not going to be a lot. If it tempts you, I'll go 350. And that really will be my final offer. No. Auction? No auction. I wish you luck. Thank you. Thanks, Leslie. At 350, I think I was spot on. But I mean, we'll see when it goes to auction. I think you did the right thing. Uh, it's here in the sale room with a four to five hundred pound estimation, and the reserve is 400 quid. Here it is now. Start with me at 340 pounds. 60 do I see in the room first at 340, 360, 360, 380. 400, 400 pounds bid. It's at 400 pounds. It's cheap at 400 pounds. 420, not expensive at that, I don't think, at 420. I think they've got a bargain here. 440, 460, 480. At 460, 480 bid. At 480, 500, 520. It's gone quiet in the room. It's with the telephone bidder. At 500 pounds on the telephone. At five hundred pounds and twenty now, all done then at five hundred. Gavel's gone down at five hundred quid. We have commission to take away. It's always a chunk of change when you take off the commission. Four hundred and ten pounds. Are you satisfied? Yes, you'll be satisfied with that. Be satisfied with that. Yeah. On the day, uh, Leslie says uh, both he and his lady friend will be satisfied. Real deal. Four hundred and ten. Tick tock. Another fantastic outcome in the sale room. The auction has brought some great prices today. But after forking out nearly £1,500 of their own money, how well have our dealers fared with their buys? Hoggy only kept one seller away from the gavel today. It was Gemma's hen night. I felt generous. 150 quid. Bottles are bubbly for Gemma, and Hoggy still cleared a healthy profit. And it was just the one item for Helen. We've got a deal, Sidney. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. She found a dealer specialising in silk embroidery and as a result she squeezed out a small markup. Some good news for Ian with his one item. Normally I am twisting this bejeweled arm up his back, but at the moment 350 sounds a very good price to me. The watch was sold to a fellow dealer for 400 pounds. And so finally we come to Cheryl. Lady Godiva made a loss of a fiver. However, it was the sweet smell of success for the silver scent bottle. I think I've paid top money, but I'm very pleased. There's no love lost when it comes to profit in the antiques world. 
Cheryl sold the scent bottle onto her dad for a nice little earner. Hmm, look out, Cheryl. I hope he's not watching. <laughs> We've had a great day, a really good crowd of people. Lots of buying, lots of selling. That's what I like to see. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. Bye for now.